Welcome back to another Chicago Brew Crew. I'm here with Chicago beer enthusiast, Ricardo. Hey everyone. And uh, you guys already know my name, so let's just skip that part. His name is Mike. <laughs> um, in any case, we're going to be reviewing today some Pipeworks beers, otherwise known as uh, the, the godfathers of uh, Chicago's kind of craft beer scene. Uh, they were one of the first, you know, real up-and-coming breweries in, in the city, right after maybe Revolution and, and Goose Island. But um, yeah, we're going to be re reviewing the Imperial End of Days and the Barrel Age End of Days, which were just released this past year. Most people are familiar with Pipeworks basically for their IPAs. Uh, they've got a pretty good reputation for them for their fish series and some of their other ones like their Ninja vs. Unicorn or uh, for example like their Lizard King which is a pale ale. But uh, they do a really really good job with their pale ales and their IPAs and really anything with hops. But I thought we'd talk about something a little different here, something that uh, is very sought after but also I feel like something that they don't get enough credit on and that's their stouts. The, they're known for their hoppy beers but these stouts I'm telling you, if you haven't tried these guys, these are actually, uh, well, this one right here, I haven't tried this one. This is one of my favorite stouts that they do, so I'm glad to try it again. And I'm the opposite. I haven't tried this one, but I've had a couple of sips of this one, so oh, it's going be very exciting. You're jumping the gun over here. I am, I am. But this is like <laughs> basically a belated tribute to Cinco de Mayo, as they use very traditional like Mexican um, ingredients for it. So, I mean. uh, Quick side note on these guys. They're made with vanilla cacao, ancho chilies if I'm not mistaken. Guajillo también? Well, ancho and yeah, I believe, does it say, I believe it was just ancho. You know what it says, chilies? I'm guessing it is the ancho and the guajillo peppers that they're using mm -hmm. in these guys. Um, and then let's not forget the cinnamon, which adds that nice touch in the end. So yeah, let's try these guys out. But before that, a twist. We're gonna do and throw a little twist in there. It's gonna be a blind taste test. Some people are like, oh, blind taste test. Well, we kind of want to show you guys how you could tell if something's barrel aged, the different notes you're going to be getting without us knowing exactly which one we're drinking. So, And hopefully, we're right. I, <laughs> if we're not right, then you should stop watching our YouTube videos. Uh, we'll re-edit it to make sure that we're right. <laughs> In any case, um, our cameraman is going to be pouring these guys. So, yeah, let's try them out. Here you go. Turn them around and uh, surprise us. Now, if you slip the forget me not in one of these, I'm going to be very upset at you. <laughs> kind of, but not really. All right. So, give it a whirl. Should yeah, we start not? off? I don't know, what do we do? Let's just, let's just no, try Let's it figure out. out what happens, big guy. Yeah. Let's just play it by ear and have fun. Let our taste buds and our nostrils do the talking. Mm. What is it saying to you? I'm smelling... It says, drink me, drink me now. I'm smelling some possible whiskey notes off of this already. Okay, That's I'm already telling you right now. This is the non-barrel age, yeah. this is the barrel age. Right? I think so, I also agree. I think this is the barrel age. Getting a lot of whiskey notes just off the nose. Um, a lot of whiskey notes, but let's see. Let's see. Um, you know what? I'm going to start off with this one because I do think this is a non barrel age, so let's try this out. Also, you know what? The retention slightly. You're cheating, you're looking at it, but that's what you're supposed to do. Now, uh, you know what? It's hard to tell with that. Uh, let's see. I'm having this one right now. Um, I'm getting a lot of cinnamon notes. A little bit of the spice kind of mm. coming off the end right there. Although really they both smell there. really good, man. Are you doing the non barrel aged or what we think is a non barrel aged one? Non I'm getting Get so much whiskey off of this. By the way, the barrel aged version was made. Uh, Elijah made, Craig. <coughs> Elijah Craig, but it was from 12, 12, 12. Ooh, no say, no say that. You know I, do I don't not know what it says, yeah. But it was a 12 year Elijah Craig barrel aged version. I feel like I'm getting more heat off this as yes, far as the sure. peppers, and I and I, I would say, I believe that has to do with the barrel, because when it's interacting with the barrel and the spices that are that are coming off of the whiskey, mixed with the with with the peppers is I feel like giving us this intention of more heat. And it makes sense because of course you know when you use a barrel 
to age your beer and some of the alcohol is going to seep in and influence the beer. Yep. I would agree. But yeah, this is definitely, that's definitely the barrel age. This is the non-barrel age. Both very tasty. But this one's definitely going to keep you warm with or without your coffee. I agree. <laughs> that's true. Or, or partner. So, cameraman, the are, verdict. You guys are correct. Yes. I thought so. Like I said, if we didn't get this right, turn off the YouTube channel, turn off your, just put your computer away and put it inside the closet. No edit necessary. Don't even go on the internet for a couple of days. So just a few side notes um, that you guys are should be aware of is the fact that uh, this is a milk stout as the base. Sure. On top of it, it's very different from uh, the Abduction series, which is a Russian Imperial stout. So it's going to be a lot thicker, kind of full body, more mold for everything going on. Milk sides are more premium. Uh, Made with the lactose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And me and Mike prefer like a spicier character. We love spicy foods. I yep. put in everything in my huevos. <laughs> Not the ones down south, but the ones that you cook. Mexican, uh, man. Yes, of course. So, like, for us, this is very, very tolerable. So, like, you know, it all depends. Figure out, like, what you like. The spice is nice. It. it is nice. But it's it's hot. It so, lingers and it builds. Yeah, it's hot. So, if you guys aren't big on that kind of spice that lingers in the back of your throat, skip. you might want to skip over this. But if you do like that spice, it's right up your alley. It's really good. For sure. But seek, this, seek both of these out, like explore, experiment, yeah. you know, like share these with friends, pop them by yourself, it seems, but you, you definitely, if you like a little bit more uh, spicy notes to it, for sure, go for the barrel aged version, if you can find it, if you go can have find it, it, correct? Yeah, so um, that's basically the review we got going on with these guys. I think they're both really good. Personally, I do kind of like how the barrel uh, interacted with the Imperial End of Days, I think it actually made everything more pronounced. So I prefer the Barrel Age. The regular is great. But on that note, Salud. Salud. We appreciate you guys watching. Please come out May 20th to our Craft Night Out at Moreno's Liquors. Food trucks, live music from Lester Gray performing outside. Lots of craft beer tastings inside. Lots of whiskey. KBS, Regal Rye releases. I mean, really, there's not, it's a win-win situation. Karaoke, Dance Dance Revolution, playoffs, <laughs> you know, everything. We're gonna have a Super Smash uh, competition going on. Mm -hmm. Just the works. So on that note, we're gonna sign off. Salud, Salud. muchas gracias, and happy post de Mayo. Happy post de Mayo. Cheers.